Hey there, I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are hard, hard to, to master. master, such as Resident Evil 3, the board game, and the City of Ruin expansion by Steamforged Games. Um, Steamforge Games is a company that is well known to take video games and turn them into board games. We've also done videos for Horizon Zero Dawn, so if that's something you like, video games from, from PlayStation, they do an amazing job, and this one, this one shines. It's this pretty thematic. Shines. Yeah. So I've played several, almost all the Resident Evil video games, and I cannot wait for Resident Evil 4 Remastered to come out essentially this month or depending on when this video is released. And so this is Resident Evil 3, the board game. And if you don't know, that's Nemesis is the big baddie yep. in Resident Evil 3. In Resident Evil 3, you imagine this is just an infected game, like going around like the zombie side and stuff. That is not the case no. here. In this game, you're going to be setting up like you would a normal scenario from other games. You have a scenario book in addition to your rule books. You do want to read that for sure. And then there are some good how to play videos if you want additional kind of seeing it in action. But you're going to take this scenario book and you're going to pick a scenario. This scenario will give you kind of the layout where you're going to put all your tokens, all your baddies. Then you have your description over here and this yellow and amber table here is very important because as you can see on that diagram, some places are green, some are yellow, some are orange. And when you get to the further scenarios, you're going to have red sections. And what that means is when you go in there, you're going to roll this black encounter dice, the one with the umbrella on it, umbrella court. And you're going to roll it. And whatever it is, so if I roll a two, I'm going to check the color table, see what I'm spawning in that zone, or see how it affects our turns. Because you're going to be drawing cards from a deck every turn to see what's happening. And depending on how far you are in the campaign and how well or how bad you've been doing and increasing that threat level, some cards are going to affect you more based on having a higher threat. So keeping the threat down by completing scenarios or taking out bosses in some scenarios is definitely going to help keep that threat level down and help you to not have to deal with that as much. If that threat level ever reaches the top, campaign is over. You lose. There are also some other things in the scenario where you're trying to find different map tokens to unlock new regions because... You're going to start here in the unlock zone of commercial uptown and downtown one. I did laminate this myself so that it would last a little bit longer because it is a thin paper thin paper sheet thin. that you're using. It's fine. You're not really rifling through it or anything much, but just for a little bit more longevity, I did laminate it. But as you go, there's going to be cards that will be placed on here which show an unlocked zone because you have either found a map token or you've completed a scenario and it says where you're going to because you're ultimately trying to find these item C cards which are on the map uh, or the, the tiles as well as other A and B items which can help you because they could be weapons but the item C's are what you need because you're rifling through these to find new zones that you can unlock in addition to that to, to trigger the finale of the campaign you're going to need to find some different items. And those items are going to be, generally, the majority of them are going to be found towards the bottom of that item C deck. So you're going to actually have to play yeah. several scenarios and complete them. You can replay a scenario if you fail it. Um, again, that threat level will increase and you'll have some different end of scenario actions that you're going to have to deal with. But... Ultimately, you're going through these different regions like you would in the video game, going to these different locations, trying to find different weapons, items, preserving them, trying not to run out of items like bullets and, and different health items that you're going to have so that you can find those four item Cs to unlock Clock Tower 1 when you do that. Again, every scenario in here is going to have a new page and you're going to go through based on what's unlocked and pick what you want to do until you get to the 
finale and whenever you get to the finale you're gonna go ahead and and do that finale don't want to spoil too much for you but then again you will have the final showdown in the courtyard as clock tower 2. Um, once you've completed that you can go into the expansion and we'll kind of save a little bit more of how you do that at the end of the video um but let's talk more yeah. i'm gonna let you talk for a second and talk more about how this is unlike zombie side like i said yeah, right this is more of an infected management game um and if you play the video game it's going to relate to you and you're going to know what we're talking about here but it's not you don't want to just try to take out everything with a gun even though you're going to have a better success rate so i'm gonna let you kind of dive yeah. in more side don't, you know, hog the time here. Well, what I'll say about this is is it's very akin to the video game. And so killing zombies and, and other creatures is really kind of difficult in this game, mm -hmm. even if you do have a gun. I mean, it's not a guaranteed success, and it's, it's wasting a lot of good resources to do that. You want to be very careful about when you use your big heavy items and stick with the knife or, or just try to get out around and run away from the different creatures and zombies like you'd kind of do in the video game because you don't want to just go all out attack. You're, you're not going to make it. You need to be uh, clever and get out around them and reserve your, your weapons and whatnot. So you're really... Feel, you get the feel for the video game in the analog board game version here um, with the different scenarios that play out and really everything kind of leads up to these epic boss battles. Mm -hmm. It feels like the video game, um, which is different than what you see with other kind of board games like Zombicide. We're going to keep coming back to that one because that's just that's the it's, top it's the one, one of the affected right. game that people are going to understand and know how. It yeah, so it's com a completely different feel yes. from that game because you feel the wave coming and you take out some of the ones that are coming too close in Zombicide and you're just trying to stay away from them. It, it's stress in a different way. Exactly. It's not like, oh, there's a big horde of zombies I got to take. It's Oh, there's a drain demos and there's nemesis. So we've got and, two baddies and, and I'm in this little tiny we hallway. Leave, we can't leave this room <laughs> because if we do, we have a threat issue or right. something, you know. Or there's like fire that. right outside the door yeah, and I could burn up. Yeah. So there's definitely stress in this game. It's just like a it's a different way of of experiencing mm -hmm. a zombie type of game. And I like that. I, I like Zombicide too. Don't get me wrong. I like both of those kind of experiences. It's just a fresh kind of take on this genre of game. It's a different feel, a different way of going about doing it. And it it fits with the board game. So, yeah. or I mean the video game. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is in the base game, you're going to have, you know, all the different walkers and things, but your your baddies are, you know, Nemesis here on the snowboard. <laughs> and the, the reason that the, the shape of the bases matter, because no space on the tile can have more than four pieces, four size pieces. And this counts as a two size, whereas yeah. your normal people are one. So you could essentially have four people there and these zombies are going to react just like in the video game. If you shoot at something, it's going to start moving your way. Um, so you don't want to necessarily shoot at it. You definitely want to take it out because otherwise, if you're too close, it will react and attack you. Right. Um, if you ever have a circular base boss figure like this on there, that's all that can be on that space. Nothing else can be on there. And I'll tell you, first time we played, knocked out uh, downtown one. All right, man, this is so simple. We go to so downtown easy. two. So simple, man. Where's the... T oh, downtown three. We got <laughs> a grave digger. And we had uh, run through all our ammo. And yes, we found very quickly at that point, yes, this is not zombie side. This is, you know, ma uh, infected management. Because if you don't yeah. have the weaponry you're not taking out these bosses and, and i will tell you with scraping by everybody else dead and my good rolling i still only got this thing from 30 health you'd think it'd be less health but 30 health to 15 i knocked out half of it pretty much by myself scraping by it was very difficult everybody else was knocked out and so the bosses are 
difficult in yeah. this. And if you don't plan for them and have the the items, yeah. the, the ammo and right. the gunpowder and stuff, just like you can craft items in the video game, you can craft them here. Just like you're limited to spacing in your backpack, you're limited to spacing here. Now, obviously, I'm playing Jill Valentine. She's the character you <laughs> gotta play with in Resident Evil 3, but the other characters, you know, Jill has, I, I think, eight items that she can hold in her, her backpack. And then if she ever gets knocked out, she's able to stand back up one time or move that over because you have your little health bar just like you do in the video game. You know, the EKG bar showing right. your life. And you start in green at fine, and then you go down, and yeah. you're in the danger level. And the game so is very thematic and fits with the... It matches, I would say, quite a bit more. I, I felt like the AI program programming, and we're comparing because it's the same company, the AI programming of the machines in Horizon Zero Dawn was thematic and kind of matched the video game and uh -huh. the the weave and different things like that match the video game but i feel like this one matches it way more this gives yeah. me much more of the video game feel of resident evil 3 right than even horizon did um and even more than even like bloodborne stuff this one is i think one of the most um the best representations of it now it's not to say that this is perfect this is not perfect right i know they had resident evil 2 the board game we have not played that this is you know, taking that, changing a lot of the story and stuff to match it, but it's also yeah. upgrading those elements. Now you also even have Resident Evil, the board game coming out that's gonna be implementing a lot of new things that this did well, that you have to think about. But I think as a person that's played many, if not, you know, almost all of the Resident Evil games, this is, pretty close of a feel and it doesn't say it's exact because how are you going to make an exact replication in a board game form but it gives you a very good feel of the board game or of the video game in board game form now i will say i do think you have to kind of rate this game and score it based off of a complete scenario because I don't know that just playing Downtown 1 and, and rating it based off of that or Downtown 2 and basing it off of that, you got to play the entire thing yeah. through because like Jeremy said, this is management. You're you're really reserving and, and scraping through these easier missions, not trying to use so much of your resources. You're just collecting in the beginning. Right, because you, you won't do so great when it comes to that boss fight. Mm -hmm. So you it's it's gonna require you to play a full scenario full campaign to get the the breadth of yeah, this Yeah, because the threat level is going up in those cards you're adding new cards to this deck that you have to pull from that deck not only is going to have these bad events and it'll have you know things that are perfectly fine it's also going to have on there a bar for that reaction so if the wrong cards on that deck you're gonna have a bad reaction yeah. from that boss but if that color's not up there you're fine the thing is, is a lot of those cards will have this smiley, this kind of like Joker, like, you know, teeth icon on it. And that's bad. It, usually those don't just affect you anymore. They affect all the players. So that bad thing, like not leaving a tile, now effect, affects everybody. Yeah. It makes it even more difficult. Same with the, you know, skull and crossbones up there. As this threat goes up, that's why you want to keep it down. Yeah the cards become more difficult and it's going to change how you can do things right. on the tiles because now you're in a different threat level. And so getting that, pushing that down any way you can by either taking the boss out, bosses out and doing that or doing things in the scenario is very crucial. Another thing is, is with the expansion, you do add more scenarios. So there's eight scenarios that have to be played in order but what you're gonna do is once you finish Clock Tower 2, you're gonna move that tracker down exactly 12 spaces. And once you do that, you're gonna start the campaign from there. Now you're not really searching anymore. You are looking for item C uh, items that are gonna be in there. And so you're still finding those, but you're not just going around finding like item B items and things anymore. And you're going to, again, 
set up the scenario. You're going to start with Hospital 1, and then that's going to take you through once you complete Hospital 1, because you cannot move on like this one. I could try Downtown 3, and back, like, yeah, I'm going to wait and go to something else. Not with this. With the expansion, you must complete these in order. So, I cannot go to Hospital 2 or whatever's next until I've completed this scenario. And so I hope I can complete it so that threat marker is not going up to end the expansion campaign. This is for people that they enjoyed the campaign, they yeah. like where they're at, and they want to continue. Another thing this is going to add is poison. So now these the poison can hit you and you're going to flip that tracker over and now you're not able to, you're, it's going to change the way that you play. So there may be some more of those cards and they'll have this poison uh, icon on it. And when they do, it's going to affect what you do. So just like the threat level icons would. There are additional weapons and there are the big baddies themselves. So big it won't even fit in the core box. And so this guy's here. This is the adult grave digger. You, you thought this was it. This is just a wee little baby. <laughs> we got the adult grave digger and we had Nemesis Stage 1, Nemesis Stage 2 at the round base. Well, forget that. We have Nemesis Stage 3. So you have two big baddies. You got additional uh, monsters that are going to be on there the hunters and the little worms. And so it's definitely going to change the way you play. It's going to give you more of that and make it even a little bit more difficult because you're adding the poison. You're adding even bigger, more powerful monsters. And so, I mean, if you're wanting more in the game and you're, you don't want to start a campaign over, definitely want to check out this expansion because I think this one gives you the most bang for your buck. They do have... a Another one, which is The Last Stand, I believe is what it's called, or, or something like that. And it's just a little box with some um, characters and things like that. So let's get into our final scores for this game, Resident Evil 3, and just uh, our overall opinion on it. Uh, you want to go first? You go first. You want me to go first. Okay. Uh, go first. So for me, as somebody who has played Resident Evil games uh, from a very young age and and you know they've been something that uh, I wouldn't say is near and dear to my heart but they're they're some of the very first video games that I ever played so I mean they do hold a special place uh, to bring it to the table and see it in a board game form is it's something that intrigues me and it's mm. eye catching and it's something that brings back a nostalgia element to me even so it, it takes a lot for me to be impressed by it because I have such a high bar, bar for that theme and for that uh, IP. Uh, but this game fulfills it. It gets, it gets that feel of playing the video game as best as you can with a board game. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who loves board games, it's fantastic. It's great that this works and it feels like the video game. Uh, so I, I have really high remarks for this, but I think the thing that I like the most about it is what I mentioned earlier that it sort of, it, it lulls you to sleep a little bit with the easiness of the entry scenarios and then it punches you in the face with the boss battles. And I like that in a sense because I don't want to get punched in the face right at the beginning and feel demoralized and feel like, well, we're never going to make it to the, very, the, the end of this scenario because we're getting killed in the beginning. It gives you a chance, it gives you an opportunity to collect what you need to collect so that you stand a chance when you get to that big boss, and then it's all hands on deck, let's go, let's take this guy out, and it's, it feels like a team effort, it feels like something everybody's working together, so it's a really cool experience. I'm going to give it a 7.7. 7. Okay. Like we said, it's a game that's going to give you a feel of that. Now, that's not to say that there's not some clunkiness here and there, it's not to say that you know, the spawns and stuff are, are exact and perfect, or the reaction is not, not hard, you know, going to be something you get used to figuring out. There are little clunky moments here and there, but I think that overall, it is a very fun game that implements those feelings and tension of the video game into board game form. 
I like that it's uh, a campaign type game. Yeah. I'm usually not one that loves campaign games. It, it feels like just a, a lot of times it's a hard challenge to try to meet and play the same thing over and over right. and get through this story. This one is not super bad because the campaign's ultimately gonna not be like, you know, 30 missions. Yeah. In addition to that, the gameplay of the scenarios is not super long. The majority of them, you, right. can, you know, your level ones and twos, you can play in about an hour or so, depending on what the mission is and what you have to do in that scenario. I will say, the boss scenarios, though, are gonna take a little bit more time. So, whereas you could play three or four of these level one and twos in the night, in about five hours, you're gonna play maybe two of the longer, harder, more difficult missions in that night in the same amount of time. Just because setup is a table hog, it takes a lot, quite a bit of time to set there are a lot up of tiles. because yeah. it is a big space and you've got to put the different uh, yellow, amber, red tiles on there. You've got to put the items where they go. You've got to put the yeah. zombies. I mean, there's a lot that you're putting. And then the, the doors and, uh, you know, the archways. And, right. And, and that's one thing is the doors and archway tiles look very similar. And a lot of times you're just putting doors. And I understand that the way they did the tiles to be kind of different but a lot of times you'll be on an inside mission, but if you flip the tile as a wall, it doesn't really show the inside. So so I see that happen a couple of times and then it's really hard to tell the difference a lot of times of the archway and the doors and there's different doors to be cosmetically different, but it makes it kind of harder to set up because of that. Um, another complaint that I do have in the non Kickstarter version, because I believe the Kickstarter does have you know, game trays uh, box with the uh, in game trays insert that you can, you know, separate things for the campaign. The insert, I believe, is a little confusing. And if you're trying to store things in a way that keeps the campaign things together, it is very difficult and to me was, you know, impossible to really do it and make it stay in a, in a good position. So this is one that, you know, I'm not big on doing it unless I'm just trying to <laughs> consolidate boxes into one. This is one that I, I tossed the insert specifically because I felt that taking the baggies and saying these are these cars, this, these are the campaign yeah. cars, everything, uh, you know, bagging the minis up even though they're painted. I, I struggled at first but then ultimately i was like i have to do it because it's just so hard to get things out for the campaign and, and that was the thing that that bugged me a little bit but i I've, I've got the baggies out several times now and it's not even a big deal i think it's even easier to clean up afterward in this instance because all the campaign stuff goes in one bag i don't have to worry about separating it in the insert um i did consolidate everything even though we, we I, i've been holding on this box i did have to consolidate everything into the expansion box because of this big miniature <laughs> will not fit in there it's just too big and so uh, i will store everything in the baggies in the expansion box because of that so my score based on all of that stuff is the same as lance surprise whoa i think that's a first seven probably is a 7.7 .7. And it's because of those little things that it makes it hard to store. Even in Horizon, I could store it in the box. Yeah. My campaign stuff, I could just stack those cards together and put them in there. Yeah. This one, the way that the insert was laid out, I could not do that. So okay. little things like that that I noticed on the tiles and yeah. the, the tokens and stuff and, and so making the setup small harder. maybe production issues. Yeah, those little things made me drop it from an 8 to a 7. But as far as just the gameplay of the game, I do find it more of more like the video game than HZ, HZD. So I, I, okay. I, I strongly believe that as far as it plays better than than that board game as a video game, but the cause or the production things yeah. does does bug me just a hair, and so I've had I've changed the way I store it because of that. Well, there you have it. That's our thoughts on Resident Evil 3, the board game. 
Uh, leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this board game, what you think about the video game, what you think about our thoughts on it. We would love to hear what you have to say and we will respond to your comments when we get a chance. If you like this video, please, please, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We put a ton of work into these videos and so it's, it means the world to us when we know that you appreciate our videos and you watch them and you give us a thumbs up and you subscribe. So please do that and uh, check out our other videos. Hit the bell icon to be notified. I'm Lance. I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master where we take a look at games that are... Hard, Hard to, to master. master. We'll catch you next time. See ya.